No one has more state pride than New Mexicans. The vibrant culture, bold flavors, unique history, and dramatic landscapes under our Zia sun are like no other. And the people of New Mexico are a rare breed. As diverse as we are, together we breathe life and soul into this high desert land, a land that promises adventure. I'm Michael Newman, and as your host, I'll be taking you with me as I seek out the best the land of enchantment has to offer. New Mexico, Mexico feels like home. In this episode, we take on the southwestern region of the state, a place where you can travel through time, from the Old West to the new frontier of the Space Age. So let's check it out. This week starts with a journey from the pages of New Mexico Magazine. Reading about US Highway 60 inspired me to hit the road. Cruising through towns of days gone by, days when cattle drives and mining were the status quo, it's a bit of a surprise to come across the VLA. It's so crazy driving through the desert and randomly seeing all these little dishes popping up. It's so wild. I decided I should make a quick stop and see the VLA up close. After checking out the visitor center, I had the opportunity to meet Dave Finley, who works at the VLA. So Dave, when you're coming down the road, you see all these dishes. So what are they and how do they work? These are dish antennas. They collect radio waves just like your satellite dish antenna uh, collects the radio waves from a satellite in space. What we do is we have 27 antennas out here. They're spread far apart so that we can see very high level of detail. We combine the signals received from all 27 uh, in one giant supercomputer and process them and come out with an image at the end. We really are on the frontier. Um, the excitement of science is the excitement of discovery. And that's what we're doing here. We're constantly discovering new things about the universe. We're taking this zoo of strange things out there in the universe and learning how they work. Everything from studying the sun, studying planets here in our own solar system, out to other galaxies when they collide. So for someone that maybe doesn't know a lot about science, what would bring them here? Well, this is forefront science. Almost every specialty in astronomy has benefited from new things they've learned here at the VLA. Because science is, is not just a little compartment. There's, there's uh, interaction between the various parts of science. But the other attraction is just this scene. You come up over the hill, that last hill, and you see these what look like little white things in the desert. Yeah. And then you get up close and you see that it's a 230 ton dish antenna that towers over you by 94 feet. It's sort of an icon for people. Dave also walked me over to the VLA's latest installation, their new sundial. The sundial was erected as a monument to Ron Bracewell, a pioneer in radio astronomy. But I couldn't wait to check out one of these antennas up close. They're just so massive. Wow. It's so cool to be able to just see the antennas, but when you actually think about what they're doing, observing the universe, it just blows your mind. What was going to be a quick stop turned out to be a real journey. Now back on the road, I've only got 40 miles to go before I reach Pie Town. And now, the moment I've been waiting for, a taste of Pioneer Pies. We have, we have to go there. She loves pie. Right tool for the job. Give it a little definition. Okay, in we go. One in, one out. That is magnificent. Oh my goodness. It's 
so good. It's like the creaminess of the oats, and then you have the, the um, tartness, and then the pecans are just so good. How's the pie? And you must be the special lady who made this loving pie. I think I did. What's your name? I'm Kathy. Kathy, I'm What's Michael. I'm Michael. Nice to meet you. Cold hands, warm heart. Yes, I, I can feel your love through the pie <laughs> and through your hands right now. That's the idea. We want you to feel the love, taste the love. So what's the history behind this place? This is the Coast to Coast Highway. They call it the Ocean to Ocean Highway. See that sign? It was the road that bisected the country. All the people from Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, after the Depression and the Dust Bowl wiped them out. They were going to California, mm -hmm. and they were going along this little mud road that goes all the way to Santa Monica. Oh. And they would get as far as they could get in one day and say, we're not going any further. We're home. We can't go home. There's nothing there. We've heard there's too many people already picking grapes in California. Let's just plant some crops and live here. And you built your little dugout cabin, and you raised up a crop of children. Right. And I think... Some clever, enterprising rancher said, Mom, bake me an extra pie. I'm going to walk up to the road and peddle it. And someone's always baked pie here ever since, but many people come, many people try, many people leave. It is challenging. Right. I feel a connection here, like many people who come in here, they feel a connection to their past. Yeah. They sit down, they talk to a stranger, they have a piece of pie. All of a sudden they're getting this nostalgic thing. And they're talking about the pies their grandma's made. And it's a trip down memory lane, one slice at a time. There's so much I want to ask you. But I have pies to make. But you have pies to make. You'll have to come in the kitchen. Yep, all right, let's do it. Why do people come to Pipe Town? Why did I come? I saw the sign. Yeah. We were driving on a road trip to the VLA, and it said, Pipe Town, whatever, how many miles? And my mom said, oh, we have to go. And when we got here, the sign on the door said, used to be pie, ain't no more for sale. Wow. She said, that is wrong. I would so change that. I would make chocolate pie and lemon pie and sour cream raisin pie and buttermilk pie and the ranchers would love it and the cowboys would love it. And I heard my mother excited for the first time in many years. I never made a pie in my life. <laughs> and my mother, bless her heart, she said, well, we just have to buy this place. She said, I can make pies, you can afford it. She said, if you buy it, I'll bake them and they will come. And I was like, I think that only sure? works in the movies, Mom. <laughs> and she said, no, 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 it'll work. I know it'll work because uh -huh. it's Pie Town. It's Pie Town. So save Chocolate. room. Chili, walnut, things I've never seen in a pie before, all in that pie, and I'm so excited for it. Save your fork. There's a pie. <laughs> There's a pie. It's so fun to see people being happy. So if we can be the place where you get a little slice of pie and a little happiness to go, <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. That's, that's for me better than pie. That is the best thing I've ever had. Here are some tips for your road trip on US 60. If you're at the Pioneer and you can't decide on one type of pie, just try the five slice sampler. The Pioneer isn't open every day, so be sure to call ahead. Gas stations and self-service are limited on the road to Pie Town. For more great stories like this from New Mexico Magazine, visit newmexico.org. Wish you could be an astronaut? Stay tuned. A great excursion to check out when you're in the southwestern quadrant of the state is Spaceport America. The first purpose-built commercial spaceport in the world, it will soon offer everyday people the opportunity to take flight into space. And it's right here in New Mexico. Along with some other space aficionados, I signed up for a tour with Follow the Sun to experience it for myself. The tour makes several stops where you can get off the shuttle and gain special access to on-site locations. Been interested in space travel since I was a little kid. 
love to watch Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon. I love to do Star Trek, live long and prosper. I never got to go to space camp as a kid, and so oh, okay. <laughs> I figured this this might be the closest I, I get. And I'm excited that we may finally in New Mexico be known for sending beings into space and not just beings <laughs> coming from space. The vast desert of Sierra County, New Mexico is the ideal location for the spaceport. High elevation, controlled airspace, and our proximity to the equator all lend themselves to the promise of spaceflight and exploration. And as our guide Mark explains, in this case, being in the middle of nowhere is an advantage. Low population density is a good thing when you're dealing with the potential dangers of rocket launching. But one of the high points of the tour was being escorted onto the spaceway. You're only mm -hmm. going to be able to kind of come out and get out here on the runway for a limited time before things start happening. For New Mexico, you know, it's always, we've always been a state kind of embedded in technology. It's still in its infancy. I mean, I realize that, but I mean, normal people like myself at some point may have an opportunity to do that, to go into space, yeah. to be astronauts. Welcome to Spaceport America. How can I help you? For your visit to the spaceport, here are some helpful hints. Plan on a three hour round trip tour. Photo ops are available on the spaceway and in front of the hangar. And if you're coming from Truth or Consequences, end your day with a hot spring soak. And now from our cabinet secretary of tourism, Monique Jacobson. Here is another New Mexico true treasure. On a road leading out of Deming that feels like it's headed into the middle of nowhere, we found the Adobe Deli. And this is not like any other deli you've ever visited. It has a Wild West atmosphere about it, complete with stuffed animals, comical signs, and other oddities making up the decor. I'd say you don't expect to find this here, but I'm not really sure where you would expect to find it. The Adobe Deli is unique, and it happens to have the best French onion soup anywhere. Some customers will rave about the giant sandwiches and remarkable steaks, but I had that French onion soup and I'll get it again every time I'm anywhere near Deming. This place is authentic. It wasn't carefully planned. It didn't follow any particular design. It just happened. And if you stop in for soup or any meal, you'll be glad you did. Gems like the Adobe Deli are all around New Mexico. You can get more information about them and all the places visited on today's show by visiting us at newmexico.org. Stay tuned for a mountain city filled with art. We're here in La Mesilla, New Mexico, right outside of Las Cruces. This small town is bustling with stories of early New Mexican history. And so we're gonna meet up with a local tour guide, Prisciliana, to give us the lowdown on what makes this place so special. Let's go check out the plaza. Prisciliana shared the stories of the days when Billy the Kid busted out of the courthouse. He was held right here for trial, and this is where they told Billy, you're gonna hang by the neck until you're dead, wow. dead, dead. Gunfights went down in the plaza, and the Spanish feared raids by the Apaches. Thankfully, in this day and age, the locals are a lot more friendly. Mesilla is loaded with local characters who have a long history in this town, like Alti Fountain, whose family were founding members of Mesilla and for whom the Fountain Theater is named. The town's history isn't the only draw. Mesilla is also renowned for its cuisine. Try the signature Tostadas Compuestas at La Posta, or if you think you're up for it, go for the world's largest green chili cheeseburger at Double Eagle. Now, time for a siesta. I'm here in Silver City, New Mexico, also known as the gateway to the Gila Wilderness. But what many people may not know is that they have a thriving art community here, and that's what we're gonna check out today. In this town, there are galleries galore, and the Silver City Gallery Association has helped create a roadmap for taking them all in on their Red Dot Tour. My first stop is the gallery and art supply shop owned by artist Diana Ingalls Leba. Diana spearheads a youth mirror program here in town, so she's going to give me a personal tour and share some of the stories that are found on the walls of Silver City. 
Diana and other participating artists work with the kids of Silver City to paint the town. We work with the community. Everybody has a say in what is in that mural, you know, the people who want the mural, the artists, but primarily the kids. With over 45 murals around town, the city streets are galleries themselves. Many of the murals represent the multiculturalism and rich history of Silver City. From the members' population to Chinese and Jewish immigrants, the history of Fort Baird to the legendary Billy the Kid, these murals give a visual introduction to all of them. And there's more than just paint on these walls. This one looks a little bit different. Yeah, it's all clay with a few car parts in it. Mosaics comprised of tile and found objects add a whole other layer to the work. One of the things that we've been doing is working to get every kid's hand in Grant County on the walls in Penny Park so they all have a hand in the park and ownership. Before you visit, download the mural map and brochure for a self-guided tour of more than 30 murals around town. Another stop on the Red Dot Tour is the home and gallery of Anne McMahon, a local landscape and nature photographer. So how did you get this shot? I was lucky enough to go out in the Gila wilderness with somebody who was like third generation here. They are now outfitters. For the first day, this hawk comes flying in and they tend to fly a grid pattern. They, they'll repeat in, in their uh, way of hunting. So the next day we're out there, the next time, and I was set up and I saw him. I just saw him out of the corner of my eye and I just fi started firing the camera. You got it center <laughs> frame, which is so amazing. Wow, like this guy doesn't look real. That is what some of my colleagues would call a luminous print. In other words, it seems to create its own light. When you're looking for a landscape or you're looking for a specific picture like that, like the picture of the hawk, how do you know when you've got the right place? Well, in the case of wildlife, you really have to learn techniques that are very similar to hunting, to know where the animals are going to be frequenting and what they're going to be doing. Putting all of that together to make hopefully what is a great photograph. What is so special about this place? We are remote enough and large enough that development has not happened. To be able to, to drive your car down the end of a road and get out and walk along the Gila River seeing no one for miles and encountering no fence, oh. I mean, what kind of quality of life is that? Pretty super. After taking in a good dose of paintings and photography, I want to look into another medium. So I had to yada yada yarn. Yada yada yarn is a stop on the New Mexico Fiber Arch Trail. This trail brings travelers straight to the source, to places where you can meet the artists, see their creative processes firsthand, and buy their products directly, discovering the arts of rural New Mexico. Hi, Susie. You, oh, Susie, my name is Michael. Diana told me to come by. Oh, I'm glad. And I see you guys are knitting. We are. Would you like to join the group? Yes. I, I'm loving Silver City already. I love the community around knitting. So you're talking about what's happening in the town. You're talking about the things that are happening in people's lives. You know, lots of people find it fun that, you know, women don't really get together and sit right. very often anymore. And if you look historically, it's something that they did. You know, whether they cooked together or did laundry together. It's something, uh, yeah, you feel like you're a blast from the past, like you're a t an, an older time where things were moving slower. I'm so grateful to be a part of it, you know, in my little time in Silver City, and hopefully get some people to come out when they're in the area to come check out Yada Yada Yarn. Absolutely, they're more than welcome. We love to, like I say, we like to hear a new yarn. <laughs> I like that, I love that. <laughs> when you're ready to head to Silver City, here's some things to keep in mind. Travel through Hillsboro to get there. The twisting Black Range route is spectacular. Be sure to hit the old Wild West town of Pinos Altos just north of Silver City. And coming up next, some big fun with some big rocks. wandering through these massive boulders in the middle of the desert between Deming and Silver City, New Mexico. And this landscape, also known as the City of Rock State Park, was developed by a volcanic eruption that happened 30 million years ago. And it seems like a really awesome place to go explore. You know, this place is so amazing right now because you feel like you're on like another planet. Maybe like Mars or, or the, the moon and like you're in the middle of a crater. That's what it feels like to me.
I'm stuck. City of Rocks. And look at the moon, it's right there. I can't imagine what kind of stargazing you can do in this place. Hiking among the rocks, I ran into Jake and Maggie, who are visiting from Albuquerque. And since City of Rocks allows dogs, Rosie was able to come along too. Yeah, this is our third time camping here. Uh, why do you come back? What, what makes it so special that you come back? The unique geology and landscape. Yeah, you feel like you're a dinosaur? I feel that way after a long hike. Jake and Maggie have been here for three nights, camping among the rocks. Accommodating RVs, pop-up campers, and tents, there's a place for everyone at City of Rocks. And the star parties too, for anybody that's- Wait, what is, this, what is that? As it turns out, with an astronomical observatory, dark skies, and wide open plains surrounding it, City of Rocks is the perfect destination for stargazing. We've been here when you can see the entire Milky Way. On the trail, we also met Tim Davis, the man responsible for creating the mountain bike trail that cuts through this rock labyrinth. <laughs> and having put in a few miles ourselves, Jake, Maggie, and I call it a day. I mean, more than anything, the view from here is just absolutely amazing. Seeing all the flat land right outside of these rocks is really breathtaking. Before you visit City of Rocks, here are some things to consider. It's 45 minutes from any shop, so bring plenty of water and sunscreen. Stop by the visitor center to discover why these rocks are here. Fire rings are provided for overnight camping, but be sure to bring your own campfire wood. Camping or not, stay for an amazing sunset. Southwestern New Mexico has so much to offer, and you guys definitely have to get down here as soon as possible. But as you know, in this state, there's always much more to see. So tune in next week for another adventure in New Mexico True Television.